Hey, I'm Kevin Floor. And I'm Josh Kopic. Being aware, self-aware of like what your personality is and being able to admit, I think some people just aren't willing to admit that they suck at things. But really, in reality, we all suck at things. And I think that separates just like a person from like a leader is someone that says, I suck at this, so I need to find help in this. Hello and welcome back to The Hollercast, a show produced by The Holler Creative in Corbin, Kentucky, whose mission is to bring hope and opportunity to the Appalachian region. On this episode of The Hollercast, we actually have The Holler's co-founders, Kevin Flora and Josh Kopic on the show with us today. Josh and Kevin started The Holler a little over two years ago, so today we're going to hear from them a few of the things that they wish they had known before they started the business, based on everything they've learned since they started it. Thank you guys so much for listening and enjoy the show. Today in the podcast studio, we have Kevin Flora and Josh Kopic, the co-founders of the company. And today we are going to learn from them the, I don't know the number of things, but we're going to learn some things that they wish they had known before they started their business. A lot of things. A lot of things. It's going to be a big number, it sounds like. We each wrote separate things, I'm sure. Well, we wrote at separate times, but they may there may be a carryover, but then we each probably will lead into separate points. So we're not going to say this is Interesting. point number one. Okay, I'm, I'm excited, excited to see if you guys said like the same things unprompted with each I'm other. I'm excited too. This was like so easy to come up with five. Really? I did it in like less than two minutes. Dang, that's cool. Uh, also, Natalie's in here. We are <laughs> making a video. Um, so if you hear some female laughing, it's Natalie in here um, managing the production of our live video recording. Or Josh. It's me. Or it could be <laughs> Josh's female laugh. Dude, come on. I'm very mainly Google. <laughs> okay. So Josh and Kevin, you guys got on here after I started asking, or before I started asking the icebreaker question that I've been asking everyone, and uh, wanted to give you a chance to answer it because you told me you wanted it. So um, why'd you go first? Kevin? <laughs> okay, I'm always Kevin. Great. What is your favorite gas station snack and drink? Oh man, what a great question, <laughs> Jimmy. Let me tell you, my favorite has got to be Twizzlers, not little cherry Twizzler nibs. The actual Swizzlers, right? Strawberry? Um, yeah, strawberry. Okay. And it's like, you know, when you're going on a road trip, you don't get the little small individual package. You no, get you, you get the whole dang thing. Oh, and BTW, when you get a family, you always get the big package because <laughs> you get your snacks, you get the first one, and then it's like, Daddy, I want one. Daddy, I want one. Yeah. And then they're gone, right? <laughs> And so, um, so that's, why, I, that's why you go for the spicy chicks mix. <laughs> then no one gets the baby. Don't want that. I got I got the reflux though. <laughs> that spicy will get me. Uh, and then my 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 drink of choice is the vanilla coke. I don't really drink vanilla coke unless I'm at Frisch's, oh, um, Steak and Shake, that's or a, a gas station. Steak and Shake, man, what a place. Vanilla okay. coke. That's a good call. Josh, you are the person that I heard this question from originally. Okay. Um, the yes. What. I don't remember what I first told you, what mine was. But, like, anytime I go, go. Okay, I have a couple. Can I name a couple? Or is Absolutely. It? This is your okay. question. This is your mm, show. I can Come do on, whatever buddy. I want. Okay. Uh, big sunflower seed guy. I like to mix it up from original to ranch to um, sometimes I like to dill pickle. That's mm-hmm. weird. Gross. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. Um, barbecue. <laughs> barbecue ones are pretty good, too. Um, but anyways, I'm just a sunflower seed guy. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then also, like I mentioned just a minute ago, I like I like Chex Mix. For some reason, a bag of Chex Mix Every is always variety. good. Every And I like the sweet and spicy one pretty good. Um, just the original is good, too. Um, now, my drink is very interesting. I like the... Uh, it's not really that interesting. It's just a drink. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, um, okay, I, I do like two different drinks, too. It depends. But Depends on where I'm at, but um, I like L8, which is a local mm-hmm. drink here, and the glass bottle only. Classic. Okay. Glass bottle only. Mm-hmm. Um, original L8. Now, they come out with those other flavors, which are okay, but the original is just the yeah. best. Um, and for those who don't know, it's like, you know, it's your ginger ale kind of. Yeah, that's well, it. It's just, <laughs> no, it's, it's very just, good ginger ale. It's actually it called A Late One. A, a Late You guys one. know that? A Late One. Yeah. No. yeah. And, it's L8. Yeah. But there's a little one in there, so it's yeah. a, I'm glad a they haven't late put the expectation one. on us to say the whole thing. It's just, it's yeah. a lot of words. It's a lot of words. Isn't that great? Um, so I like L8 ones and um, Big Blue, which is oh, yeah. the mm. brother to, the big brother to Big Red. <laughs> 
right? Yeah. Big Blue, incredible drink. It's Y'all like when they, spill, when they spill Big Red on the floor, they're like, we'll just dye it blue and call it a different drink. It's, uh, it's it, But it doesn't taste like Big Red at all. It's, right. It, it it's tastes disgusting. like, um, I don't know, it's like a creamy blue raspberry. It's mm. it's it's mm. so good. Big Blue, man. Go you can only get it at gas stations, too. Yeah, exactly. No one else <laughs> Yes. But I like to treat myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Now I guess we can get into what we're going to talk about today. So, who wants to go first? I'll let Josh go first. All right, so I think I don't, maybe maybe this is just like um, things we've been going through recently that prompted the first one. But the first one that I wrote down was difficulty in managing the team. Mm-hmm. I think there's several. There's a couple different layers to this. One of them is managing a team and how... Uh, I guess just staying productive, um, managing a team to make sure that everybody's at max productivity. Uh, a year ago, like exactly as we're speaking, maybe a little bit a little bit more than a year ago, it was just me and Kevin. So we've yeah. had to learn in a very short time um, how yeah. to manage a team. So like um, in the season we're in as a company, I think that was my number one is mm-hmm. always worrying about managing a team. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it came real to me this summer whenever people started like taking vacations and yeah i'm like man people are able to go on vacation with their family because like we're paying them to be able to take time off i mean it, i don't know it entered another level for me yeah. of a uh, responsibility for a team uh, and managing them because of that for some reason mm-hmm. i don't know it, it tricked or it uh, triggered something but that's my number one um so the productivity make sure everybody's productive um but also keeping a culture um in here that is like that makes uh, the team want to work together and like each other. Mm-hmm. I think one, I always thought it's weird, like playing on sports teams growing up and stuff, like you don't really like your teammates all the time, yeah. you know? So like when I, when I was thinking like starting to put together a team, like I never want that for to not people like that people. are here. I want I want people to like each other and, and want mm-hmm. to be here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, that, I guess I'm, I'm, I'll worry about that. Is, is the culture right to where it's setting up the ability for us to, to have a team that likes each other. Um, mm-hmm. And so a strong culture, um, or I guess productivity and having a strong culture within the team are things that um, are really difficult to manage. Whenever you're just a year into it, like having a team, yeah. I mean, it was really easy to have a culture that we wanted. Um, it was easy to just put our headphones and just not say anything for a couple hours and it was just me and Kevin. Yeah. Um, but that really, when we do that um, now, it kind of, brings the vibe of the office Throws down off a little bit it does so um <laughs> while it's probably best for our productivity to not be goofing off and having a good time mm-hmm. um maybe that's not best for our culture so balancing that yeah. is, mm-hmm. is really hard um, yeah and it's yeah. not the first point on my list but um <clears throat> echoing the team thing i think i, I looked at it i guess from a little bit different angle because like josh said when we first started it was just me and him and there wasn't really a need or a responsibility except for you know ourselves we were mm-hmm. holding each other accountable to the extent that we were holding ourselves accountable, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I wish I would have known at that time, as we had been planning for a team and thinking through, you know, how do we build a team, the skills that I needed to develop during that time where it was just Josh and I. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I feel like now, in a lot of ways, inadequate or that imposter syndrome where I'm kind of like hiding under a desk and thinking like, am I really the person to teach this or really the person to lead this effort? Because... I don't feel like I've worked on it myself. And so, you know, all kinds of things. Like um, like right now, I'd, I feel the need to, like, be more of a leader to the team in um, spiritual development because we all spend so much time together in the office. You know, we spend more time together than I spend with my own family, mm-hmm. um, which is crazy to think about. You know, like yeah. with a wife and kids, I spend less time with them than I do, like, you, James, you know. And so if I'm, if I'm spending my time at home intentionally on developing my children and teaching them things and treating my wife, you know, correctly as, as good as I can, then why am I not doing that in office as well? And so, um, how are we, how are Josh and I working on ourselves to develop ourselves so that we can be better leaders? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, things that, um, you know, I think I'd like to move forward with are things like having a, a, a weekly like prayer time where Josh and I have talked about, you know, bringing someone in to lead us all in a Bible study. Mm-hmm. Um, so like from a spiritual side, you know, that, um, you know, emotionally, how do I how do I separate my personal life from my personal problems, not bring them into the office, to not mm-hmm. just bring the vibe down, but not not affect relationships in office, yeah. not affect relationships with clients. So I think there's a huge um, 
need that I, I see now that I wish I would have saw at the very beginning to learn how to lead by by doing it myself and learning it myself. Yeah. I mean, that was a conversation we had recently. Um, it's been a couple months now, I guess. But, I mean, when we had one of our employees come to us and say, look, we, you know, I don't know, but just brought some things to us they were struggling with. Mm-hmm. And um, so what we learned from that conversation was, you know, the – the culture, um, the, what we want the office to be like, you know, it starts with, with leadership and how people look at us. So mm-hmm. we need to be the hardest working individuals here. We need to be the ones steering the boat, not in every project, not in every task, but we need to be the ones that are setting the tone. And I think we put that on some of our employees to do that too mm-hmm. much, maybe too quickly. Um, but eventually, like, we can probably step, take steps back in that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. for at least in the, in the season we're in right now, you know, the – the culture starts with us and how we how we lead and what we want the what we want the culture to be starts with us so um that was kind of you know a gut check um conversation that we've had to have but you know like it just kind of piggybacks on what kevin was saying it's just um we didn't take the time when it was just me and him to say what would it be like to have a team and then how do we need to conduct ourselves to be able to lead them um, properly yeah. um so I think like a case in point would be, you know, when it was just Josh and I in, in an, a room, right? Um, and I was, um, I don't know, I, I hadn't slept that night because my baby had cried all night. And, you know, I I was frustrated with something like I could just openly express that to Josh. He could be like, you know, hey, man, that sucks. Sorry. Like, um, encourage me a little bit, slap on the back and let's move on. But now, like for me to talk openly to Josh about that same exact scenario everyone's going to listen in Mm -hmm. it's gonna you know everyone wants to chime in and all of a sudden we've got completely off track over something that i'm personally struggling with Mm -hmm. i didn't need to bring that up right so Mm -hmm. um it's you know we can pull each other aside and have those conversations but um it's just different Mm -hmm. and i I think i wish i would have thought through that at the very beginning of the business of Mm -hmm. how would things be different and how can josh and i prepare ourselves now in office working side by side for that future that we want to get to yeah I'm sure there's like it would help to think through it and like try to imagine yourself in this in office with five more people mm-hmm. seven more people however many it is but i think you couldn't really know until you're in it and now you're seeing things like you couldn't have predicted even if you were trying to mm-hmm. and from a from a funny side i mean we all love the show the office and you know it's like that's what she said it's like a common joke on the office right but when you have girls in the office and i know natalie's in here but you know, she lives this every day like you can't just throw that's what she said jokes out all the time because it's an actual real life thing we're not a we're not a sitcom but um so like we we need to be careful you know like we need to really watch ourselves because what, how we act and what we do in the office is looked at by everyone in the office and mm-hmm. um You know, how we talk about our wives, how we talk about our church, how we talk about our friends, you know, all that stuff, how negative we are, how positive we are. All of that stuff is mirrored by the employees and by the culture of the Mm -hmm. office. And so if Josh and I are constantly negative um, because of personal stuff going on, then, man, we're going to walk in tomorrow and the office is going to be negative. Like we we can we can nail that down at the end of every day of how tomorrow morning is going to be. It's pretty easy to see that. And uh, like I said, we just never we never thought through that. Interesting. I'll put you uh, on the spot a little bit, James, because you've been here for okay. uh, sweet seven, eight months. I guess what we're what we're talking about here. What would you? I guess how how are we managing a team? Like maybe maybe feedback in some in some way would be good. Yeah, it's no pressure, uh, but. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Natalie, you can pitch in too. But yeah. um, I guess what we're talking about, <coughs> do you see us making a, an effort um, in kind of the in those ways of building a culture, um, building one that's you know very fun but also productive? Um, yeah, for sure. I think um, I know that you invest in us as individuals, which I think is ultimately an investment in the culture, especially since there's like less than 10 people in here. The fewer people there are, the more an individual has an impact on what the culture is. So while there's still only like 10 in here, less than 10 in here, the investments that you make, just your investments in us, like personally and professionally, those have a huge impact because like if you, you two get like two people on board with whatever your thing is, that's like half the office that's bought into what the culture should be, what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think, yeah, I see that through like the investments you make in us personally or individually. And then... um, there's obviously a ton of pieces to managing a team that I wouldn't know what to do. 
mm-hmm. and you guys know what to do. So, like, I'd say you're doing that well. <laughs> well, a lot of that's because there was a problem today. So we go home, think about it, or text each other, mm-hmm. and then tomorrow do it differently, right? Like, yeah. we're we're very much kind of a. I mean, we're not trained experts in anything that we're doing, um, mm-hmm. but that's what makes it fun too. I mean, every day is a challenge, so that's, yeah. that's great feedback because yeah. that shows that we're not we're not showing our hand fully to you. Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah. now that we're trying to hide it. But. Well, I mean, listen. I mean, and I don't know. We don't say things like we don't know what we're doing all the time to yeah. like scare you or yeah. to. I mean, it's more like we say that because like we're trying to inspire. Yeah, um, trying to say, look, like we don't. I don't know, man. There's something. It there's something someone else to say. Oh, that guy. He doesn't think he's better than me at this, or more suited for this. So right. it mm-hmm. gives me like responsibility. It just comes back to a willingness to put yourself out there, um, yeah. which kind of like it's going to be brought up in some other points yeah. I'm going to make. But why don't you? Why don't you go ahead and make that point? <laughs> we'll talk about insecurities. Um, okay, so man, so back to the original question: What are the some difficulties we didn't foresee that when start like after starting a company? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, kind of what it is. Close. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> um, I think I, I guess uh, insecurities are always going to be there. Um, there's one thing I'm not insecure about, which is like starting new things. Mm-hmm. Um, so like starting the business was never uh, something I was insecure about or fearful of. Mm-hmm. Um, is more. Uh, there's a couple things like put putting my face, my voice out there um, is one insecurity of mine. Um, yeah. I don't think I have like the the bubbly most bubbly personality. Yeah, right. I agree. Uh, <laughs> for myself, also maybe for you. I don't know. <laughs> um, which is I didn't okay. Mean I agree. I meant I, I feel is. that. Um, yeah. I but listen, like we we've hired we back to the managing team. We've hired um, in ways to kind of uh, make up for our own um, lacking of personality <laughs> mm-hmm. or um, insecurities. Right. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. So I, I um, battling insecurities and overcoming those is something that I didn't foresee, but. I mean, I guess it was always going to be like, it sounds crazy because I think most people are scared of starting a business. Mm-hmm. And so like they're insecure about that. So they're going to say they're going into it with insecurities. Right. Yeah. That was never really something I was insecure about. Like I dropped everything to start. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I had no idea where my next dollar was going to come from. I yeah. quit my jobs. I was probably done with a, you know, a one year old and a wife. You know, we've only been married a couple of years and I was probably dumb. You know, but. <laughs> That was one thing I'm not insecure about is starting the company. So then, like, once the company started going, I started figuring out some of my insecurities, mm-hmm. which um, I don't know, I guess I could go into, but it's probably going to be really boring. But um, I think managing those is, is something I, I deal with every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's difficult because I'm uncomfortable. I mean, I put myself in uncomfortable situations every day. Sometimes they come up on me and I <laughs> don't realize it. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I, I do. I try to stretch myself. And I think that's something that kind of surprise me the I afterwards guess. insecurities right right um i don't know i need i guess i need an example um, to make it make sense but i have um, an example in one of my points this is, okay. this is good it's wow. it's not the same thing this but I'm, synergy. I'm taking i'm taking you know what he's what he's given and uh, adapting it and so um i have written down the need for community involvement but i think this goes hand in hand with what you're talking about with insecurities um especially living in a small town in, in appalachia where we're faced with this um challenge i guess more more than anything of how do we make this work while living in a small town it would it'd be pretty easy and we've said this before it's moved to a big city because there's so many businesses and we can niche mm-hmm. down so specifically that um in our service offering or our product offering to where mm-hmm. we could get enough businesses in that big city area to buy into what we're doing but what we're having to do is go more general or more broad with our service offerings and our our business really rides on relationships. So Josh and I learned that pretty quickly that um, you know, when people at church or, or our family members would hear that we started a business, well what do you do? was the question. So we needed to work on our elevator speech. We did that. We got more confident in that. We made some videos that we've never used. So maybe we'll release them like year ten of oh, business or Natalie's, something. I'm, Natalie's seen them and she's uh, Yeah, maybe we won't release them now. <laughs> um but what we what we learned was that we really need to get involved in the community, and um, Josh and I had enough self awareness to know that we weren't the people to do that. Mm-hmm. And so, be it an insecurity, be it you know whatever whatever it was, call it whatever you want to. Um, I mean that is a big reason that you know we hired Chase specifically is to be a local outreach person who loved to talk to people. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't didn't mind to be out of the office and on the go all the time. That's how we pitched the job description to him, mm-hmm. and um, 
you know, because we, Josh knew him a little bit, um, and I didn't at all, but Josh knew that he would be the guy to agree to that. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of neat, you know, seeing Chase step up and take that role because of Josh and I's insecurity in doing that. I wasn't born and raised in Corbin. Josh was. Josh is, you know, much more introverted, I think, than, than I am. But at the same time, like, I, I can be extroverted but only to an extent. Yeah, and then I get frustrated with people. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's not that I don't love people. Like, that's what we're called to. But it's just, it's not who I am. And when I try to be that, that's all I got, you know. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, like, I still got to give some of myself to my family. And so anyways, as soon as we hired Chase is really when things started picking up because he wasn't afraid to get out in the community, mm -hmm. join the Rotary Club, go to the chamber luncheons, you know, just shake hands and meet and greet. And so then we saw that most of our business growth came from those relationships that we had. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been until recently that we've been starting to get growth in our business outside of relationships. Yeah. So I think from the very get go, you know, Josh and I just thought we could put up a website and many of our clients think this too, by the way, um, <laughs> huge misconception. You can't just put up a website and a Facebook page and, uh, have a booming business overnight. It really takes a lot of relationships to get it started. Mm -hmm. And then some professionalism, some word of mouth, a lot of content, a ton of content to build your brand to where people look at you as a legitimate business that can handle their brand. Because mm -hmm. um, we do business to business. I mean, that's that's our primary thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. It's cool that your uh, first and second points kind of overlap. So I guess it, you did them in opposite order. You realize what your insecurities were and what your weaknesses were, and then you hire your team mm -hmm. based yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and part part of it's selfish too. Like I never want to do this task again. So mm -hmm. I need to hire someone that's going to be really yeah. good at it. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the also like, I mean, being aware, self-aware of like what your personality is and being able to admit, I think some people just aren't willing to admit that they suck at things. Um, but really in reality, we all suck at things. And, uh, I think I, I can get separates just like a person from like a leader is someone that says, I suck at this. So I need to find help in this. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I think that's what we decided to do. I'm not saying that we're the best leaders, I guess, but you know, Pat, I could pat Kevin on the chest for saying that or on the back, not the chest, I'll pat him on the chest, <laughs> on the back, I'll pat him on the back for saying that about himself. Like I need help in this. And, Give me a pat. That's all I need. And then Kevin can say the same about me. And, um, so anyways, um, I think, I think, I think those insecurities were pretty glaring, um, after we started the, the company yeah. and, and we knew that we needed help. Um, in, in achieving where we wanted to be. I um, mean, achieving the task and the, achieving the goals, um, we need help with that. I think the world tells us, too, that you should just work on your weaknesses so they become a strength. And right. um, we learned pretty early on, I think it was from a book or somebody speaking or something about, um, you know, if, you, if you're constantly working on your weaknesses and everything that you do and who you become is just a mediocre person. Yeah. And so when, when you think about that, you think, okay, well, what are we good at? Um, what do we need to become great at? And then we need to hire a team to do the rest mm -hmm. and so you know what Ford's great at I'm not you know and so it it helps me to delegate because I know that it would take significantly more time for me to do it at the quality that someone else on our team could do it and I think this is the first time that I feel confident that we have the team to scale our business and that's what I'm excited about for this year is the scalability of our team and um, we're actually getting ready to sign a contract and this is the first contract we've been able to sign to where we don't have to hire a new person mm -hmm. um, yeah. that can fit within our team's skills and abilities and yeah. we can create enough margin to now make profit without having a new expense yeah that's huge <clears throat> business booming 2020 2020 2020 vision all right hashtag <laughs> Um, we have an eye care client right now, so yeah, that's cool. That is very cool. It's the year of them. It's the year of, what are they called? Ophthalmologists? Op, op, Ophthalmologists. Optometrists? Optometrists. Hey, Ford here from Holler Hustle. Just wanted to let you know about a feature we have on the site that allows you to sign up for daily emails so you can get fresh marketing news right into your inbox every weekday morning. To subscribe, visit hollerhustle.com. Thanks, guys. Kevin, you want to go first this time? Yeah, I'll go first, um, and then see if you can adapt one of your points to mine. It's kind of a fun game in the moment. Um, the need for an accountant. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you're going to adapt one from that, but um, this, this, I guess this kind of chimes. Very pra- that's very practical. I, yeah. I wasn't that practical, but that's just different than what we think. Yeah, and this, and this goes back to you know what we were just talking about. Um, a lot of times we think that we can do everything, and we've had some situations lately to where. <laughs> Um, like we built a sign for someone, right? Like a street side sign. And it's mm-hmm. like, gosh, we could do this. How how hard is this? You know, and you get into it and it's like, oh, we're a little bit in over our heads. But, um, you know, we figured it out. But that didn't come without long hours. And so um, transfer that over to the accounting and tax world. And uh, you're not really allowed legally to get in over your head with that. And so you really have to figure that out. And that's something, you know, like we just talked to a guy the other day who's making tons and tons and tons of money and has a very successful business. And he's like, I use TurboTax. Like I, I do my own accounting. I'm like, man, like kudos to you for figuring out how to make your life efficient. Um, but we're not there. Like we, we need that kind of professional help. We need to, Mm -hmm. to fall back on people that, that know the legalities because that not just secures our business, but that secures, you know, our families, um, Mm -hmm. our employees, our position in our community, you know, say you miss a back tax. Well, that gets published in the newspaper. That's not, that's not good, you know? And so there's some, there's some things that need to be done right. And, I feel like we're a couple years late on some of those things, Mm -hmm. but we're now in a position where we have them right. Um, I feel more confident now than ever that we're not going to get a piece of mail that, you know, I'm not expecting. And that's, (laughs) I'm not saying that to say like, we've, we've, we've never cheated. We've never done anything, but you know, um, what do they call it? Stupidity, ignorance. Let's just use ignorance. I think stupid's like a bad word, right? Ignorance is like a high quality bad word. And so, um, Ignorance is not excusable in the court, right? And so there's a lot of tax law. Anyways, hire an accountant right out of the gate. Like your first money that comes in needs to be for those professional services that you should not try and handle on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really have much of a point. I didn't write down a point. I guess I could. It's okay. I don't you really can. have a point. That one, that one was just so practical. I didn't think practical. Mm-hmm. That was a really practical one. Um, I think. One th- one thing when you were talking, I think the importance of an accountant um, and professional services like that. But an accountant in our scenario, um, one thing that we really enjoy to do is to strategize. And so, what an accountant will do for us is get, um, print us out reports and um, talk us through, you know, what services are we providing that are profitable? What are ones that we may be able to drop, or what? How can we increase our workload with those services to make them profitable? Um, mm-hmm. So, like. Having an accountant for us allows us to get back into strategizing how we optimize our company yeah. um, and make it a stronger one. So it's a, it's a pl- it's a strategy play really for us to have an accountant in mm-hmm. the long run. Now, outside yeah. of all the legalities and keeping everything secure, um, what it really does though is allow it allows us to keep doing what we do well, which mm-hmm. is look at data, plan around that data to to put together a strategy um, with with a group of team to be able to um, do something do something different or keep doing what we're already doing just somehow increase it mm-hmm. um so i, I think, think the last two years play, with really. the, like I've, the last two years i know that i've spent maybe the last two to three weeks of the year doing our bookkeeping for the year rather than oh, okay. rather than doing a little bit each week or each month like yeah. i've i've wasted the, the last you know like third of the last quarter not pushing mm-hmm. our business forward because we were stuck doing something right. we're not meant to be doing. Yeah. Um, so what could have we have done? But yeah, I think the accountant point is, you know, to Kevin's point, is, I mean, it's very, I mean, it helps with legalities and security and knowing that that stuff's handled. But it's also a strategy play for us. Um, it's an investment in the, back into the company to allow us to make wiser decisions um, mm-hmm. with our money. The more you know. The more you know. <laughs> What's your next point, then? I think my next point um, is... It kind of pulls in a couple of the points we've already made, which is um, staying positive. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, I wrote two different, and that's why I took a minute to sit here and read them, is that I think I'm going to combine two points into one. Okay. So um, I think so. Like the, the the need to stay positive, I think. Um, I th- it's, it's difficult to stay positive um, whenever things aren't going right or you think you're going to secure an account that doesn't happen or it... You know, it turns out it just, you know, it's another four months. You got to wait on it or, you know, I don't know. There's so many reasons to be negative, I think, Um, not just within our business, but I think the whole world, man, is looking for things to be negative about. So it makes it even harder to be positive. So I think 
it was super easy at the beginning of the company to be positive um, because every day was a win. You mm-hmm. know, I, every day I didn't have to go back to work was a win. Yeah. You know, we got to experience a winning day every single day. Yeah. Um, and that's cool. And in some ways we still are, you know, like we, we still, I still don't have to go back to get another job because of a company yeah. that, you know, we, we, we made. So like that in and of itself is a win. So, but you know, you start, you have those same wins every day and, and it doesn't really start feeling like a real true win every single day. So like mm-hmm. those start to die off and then other things start coming in and then um, it's easy to become negative because the length of time between a big win is just longer. So it just have to wait longer. Mm-hmm. Um, so staying positive within the, the office, um, staying positive that, you know, our company is going to continue to grow. Um, that's, those things are hard. Also staying positive at home. I think yeah. a lot of times like the negativity of the business um, I think this is true for everybody. I th- unless you're Superman, like you're not yeah. going to be able to leave your your business at the office. Like you're going to bring it home with you. And so, the difficulty in staying positive at home sometimes is is really is really hard. Luckily, um, I can speak for for my wife and for Candace too. Like we, me and Kevin married married up, and mm-hmm. um, they're they are they are incredible. Agree, agree, um, agree too. <laughs> but, you know, but at times they're they're probably like. Um, you know, uh, why why are you guys doing that? Or that doesn't seem right, you know? And, like, that kind of puts us into a negative. Like, when we hear that from, like, the most important person to us in the world, it kind of puts you in a negative because you work so hard right. uh, to do something, and then they look at you one day. Maybe it's a, you've worked on something for a couple of months, and, like, so why are you doing that again? Yeah. And then you're like, dang it. <laughs> why question. am I doing that? Good question. Well, so, like those steps of faith that, like, Josh and I, you know, are praying individually about and, and take together. Um, but it's not necessarily a at-home conversation, I guess. But yet we make these bigger steps, you know, together as a business. And then we got to go home and <laughs> explain that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's not always easy. But to stay positive, I think, is yeah. the main thing here. Yeah. And our wives are, like I said, they're amazing. And mm. they should not have been as supportive as they've been. I mm-hmm. mean, like, we've made a lot of crazy decisions. We've lost a lot. Um, we've won, you know, about as much as we've lost, you know, mm-hmm. so it's kind of evened mm-hmm. out in a lot of ways. But, you know, the support we've got from them has is, is allowed us to, to continue on and to do things um, that, you know, we're, we're playing a bigger game, and we yeah. know that. We're not trying to win the ball game. We're trying to win, you know, we're not trying it's to win serious. the battle. We're trying to win the war, you know, kind of yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. And so, anyways, we're... Uh, I don't know. I think we're lucky in a lot of ways that, that, but I think we can carry our negativity at home, which affects our home life, mm-hmm. and which is kind of the point I was getting to earlier. And I got sidetracked, but the the need to stay positive is so important um, for every every aspect um, of our business and our families. And so I think the difficulty in that came to me out of nowhere because, like I said earlier, every day was a win at the beginning, and then it just became mundane. Everything. I mean, I was it was easy to keep you know, staying positive all the time and yeah. then start something bad happened. Mm-hmm. And then like, I hadn't experienced that before. And yeah. so I'm like, Oh man, we're never going to recover. Yeah. Like, but anyways, it's such a huge need. And I think mm-hmm. we talked about that several times, just like with the, you know, back to the team thing, um, staying positive for the culture, mm-hmm. staying positive for our employees to continue to grow and to know that they can achieve whatever they want to as well. They can learn any task that we do. Um, yeah. We started out not knowing what we were doing, but you know, so are they, and they can do, they can get to our level mm-hmm. and surpass us. We hope, you yeah. know, like mm-hmm. we hope that you know our team can do things better than we can. So, anyways, that's that was a point of mine. Now, it's combining um, staying positive, but also like not carrying my work home. Yeah, trying to do a better job at that. Gotcha. Um, so those two points were kind of when I wrote them, they were separate thoughts, but they kind of overlap too. Mm-hmm. I like that. You got a last one. I do, I yeah. do, and it, again, okay. it's it's uh, more practical. But I think I can make it less practical. And uh, no, I'm just <laughs> I do like I, exactly, I like practical. It's exactly what no, that's how you think, and like that's that's great. I mean, I need that. No, well, we need the each viewers other. Viewers, the listeners, well, listeners and viewers, right? Oh, we got a video. Um, yeah. I completely forgot the video. Mine. Uh, my last thing is to learn quickly how to evaluate um, your competition and how to have a growth mindset around that. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's a great book by uh, Carol Dweck called Growth Mindset. And um, it talks about, you know, you either have a mindset of of you're okay where you're at or you have a mindset of you always want to get 
somewhere else. And so that growth mindset um, keeps you positive, keeps you looking for things, keeps you looking and analyzing others to see how you can better yourself and what you can do. And so it took us a little bit, um, you know, like, for instance, there was someone in our same community who started a, a very similar business to ours um, and used a lot of our same wording on <laughs> their website. And at first, I had the, the like wrong mindset, right? Like I was stuck where I was at and thought this is horrible. It's the worst thing ever because I, I don't know, I'd, I guess our situation, I knew that Josh and I as a team were going to be greater than, you know, a single person doing this on the side. Mm-hmm. I quickly switched that growth mindset and, and thought, you know what? When someone's copying you, and I think Josh had said this first, first time I'd ever heard it, when someone's copying you, that just means that you're doing something right. Um, You're doing something good enough to where someone else sees the benefit in what you're doing and they think that they can do it too. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, it just became motivation for Josh and I to push ourselves harder, push our business harder, push our quality higher to outperform that local competitor, right? You know, which is fine, like good for them. They see an opportunity, they should take it. You know, like we saw an opportunity, we take it. Mm -hmm. Um, That's how business goes. And I don't think that it needs to be looked at as a negative dog eat dog world. It can be looked at. And I think, you know, something I wish I would have chosen to do at the beginning and I'm doing more of now is looking at, at this dog eat dog world as a positive opportunistic thing for for individuals anywhere i think the whole the whole thing behind a growth mindset allows us to move farther faster and um being able to evaluate your competition is a is a very practical step um there's tools online that help you evaluate their website and what keywords they're paying for to get found there's there's things that you can do like don't be afraid to go meet with them schedule a meeting where your team goes and meets with their team And, you know, maybe it's a similar business just far enough away to where you're not really tapping into the same audience. Mm -hmm. I think all of those things are are really good because you're going to find places that that don't overlap that you can begin to collaborate with other people on. And it's just growing, um, you know, the opportunity that you have in your business and working with other people. I mean, businesses, relationships, and I think that's that's important to remember at all times. Mm. Beautiful good. Don't you feel like our competition, some, like not our competition, but competition, like whenever they steal your ideas, like they just, it feels like you're in kindergarten again, kind of. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, they're kind of like, I don't know, it's just funny. It is. It just, is. Uh, it is a little silly when, when someone steals your idea. and I, That's I think a compliment, man. Like at yeah. the end of the day, it's a compliment to us and our creativity and, and what we do. Um, that And someone's paying attention. Right. You know, and if our competitor, if our competitor is only paying attention because their customer has heard about us, right. you know what I'm saying? So like, it's even it's a huge. It's even little it's things, right. but again, they like, did it because it worked. Yeah, why not? Why not? It's an opportunity, and you know what? It means it's an opportunity for us because people are going to look at that and then familiarize themselves with it, and then see us. Amen, brother. Amen. Right. Those are the things <laughs> that Josh and Kevin wish they knew before they started a business. So thank you, Josh and Kevin, for sitting down with us, and uh, Natalie for being in here and making video happen. It was really cool. <laughs> um, so thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you guys next time on the Hollercast. The yeah. Holler.
Um, so Josh and Kevin, you guys got on here <laughs> after I started asking, or before I started asking the icebreaker question that I've been asking everyone, and uh, wanted to give you a chance to answer it because you told me you wanted it. <laughs> so um, why'd you go first? Kevin? <laughs> okay, I'm always Kevin. Ready. What is your favorite gas station snack and drink? Oh man, what a great question, <laughs> Jimmy. Let me tell you, my favorite has got to be Twizzlers, not little cherry Twizzler nibs. The actual Twizzlers, right? Strawberry? Um, yeah, strawberry. Okay. And it's like, you know, when you're going on a road trip, you don't get the little small individual package. You no, get you, do not. you get the whole dang thing. Oh, and BTW, when you get a family, you always get the big package because <laughs> you get your snacks, you get the first one, and then it's like, Daddy, I want one. Daddy, I want one. Yeah. And then they're gone, right? And so, um, so that's, why, I, that's why you go for the spicy chicks mix. <laughs> then no one gets the babies don't want that. I got I got the reflux though. <laughs> <That> spicy <laughs> will get me. Uh, and then my 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 drink of choice is the vanilla coke. I don't really drink vanilla coke unless I'm at Frisch's, oh, um, Steak and Shake, that's or a, a gas station. Steak and Shake, man, what a place. Vanilla okay. coke. That's a good call. Josh, you are the person that I heard this question from originally. Okay. Um, the yes. What. I don't remember what I first told you, what mine was. But, like, anytime I go, okay, I have a couple. Can I name a couple? Or is Absolutely. It? This is your okay. question. This is your mm, show. I can Come do on, whatever buddy. I want. Okay. Uh, big sunflower seed guy. I like to mix it up from original to ranch to um, sometimes I like to dill pickle. That's mm -hmm. weird. Gross. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. Um, barbecue. <laughs> barbecue ones are pretty good, too. Um, but anyways, I'm just a sunflower seed guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then also, like I mentioned just a minute ago, I like I like Chex Mix. For some reason, a bag of Chex Mix is always good. Variety. And I like the sweet and spicy one pretty good. Um, just the original is good, too. Um, now, my drink is very interesting. I like the... Uh, it's not really that interesting. It's just a drink. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, um, okay, I, I do like two different drinks, too. It depends. But depends on where I'm at but um, I like L8 which is a local mm -hmm. drink here and the glass bottle only classic the okay. glass bottle only um, original L8 now they come out with those other flavors which are okay but the original is just the yeah. best um, and for those who don't know it's like you know it's your ginger ale kind of yeah that's it it's just <laughs> no it's very good ginger ale it's actually called a late one a, a late you guys one. know that a late one. yeah no. yeah and it's l8 yeah but there's a little one in there so it's yeah L i'm glad a they have late put the expectation one. on us to say the whole thing it's just it's yeah. a lot of words it's a lot of words isn't that great um so i like l8 ones and um big blue which is oh, yeah. the mm. brother to the big brother to big <laughs> red all right, yeah. big blue, incredible drink. It's like when it. they spill when they spill big red on the floor. They're like, "We'll just dye it blue and call it a different drink." It's, uh, it's it, but it doesn't taste like big red at all. It's right. It, it it's tastes disgusting. like um, I don't know. It's like a creamy blue raspberry. It's mm. it's it's mm. so good. Big blue man. Go you can only get it at gas stations too. Yeah, exactly. No one else. <laughs> when I like to treat myself. <laughs> Okay, cool. Now I guess we can get into what we're going to talk about today. Boom. There it is. Boom. <laughs> All right. <coughs> cool. 